This is the AOC Sports High School Football Preview Show. Just two more weeks to go for the broadcast uh, portion of the schedule here on Friday Night Rivals. And we got a 7 8 matchup tonight. We're on the Eastern Shore. Fairholt playing host to Alma Bryant. Good evening. I'm Jim Cox, my partner Dan Brennan, as we get ready for tonight's matchup here. And uh, uh, boy, Dan, we. We've been treated to some really great games uh, this season. Yes, uh, we have. Last Friday night, I mean, Blunt and McGill up at Blunt. I mean, that that was another great, great, great 6A Region 1 matchup. You know, first of all, we're so grateful that we've gotten through our schedule <laughs> all the way through somehow. <laughs> uh, amazing. Uh, but, yeah, we uh, uh, got near the end of the season and had ourselves a, a real barn burner up in, uh, in Blunt. Uh, Blunt and uh, McGill, a lot of, uh, a lot of playoff ramifications on the line and a great football game and, and boy how, our first time seeing blunt our second time seeing mcgill boy how different did mcgill look from the team we saw week one against sarah land yeah they were they were really housed by sarah land 42 to 7 i believe in the first game of the season and uh, what uh, coach hill told us was they got a little they got a little cute with their defense and they they, they try to install some things and cute is not a thing i don't think plays really well with coach hill <laughs> probably not <laughs> uh, but what he ended up doing was going back to the uh, defense that they had and since then they have been very tough to score on and a uh, great game on friday night yeah and that blunt team uh you know they're gonna end up probably being uh maybe a four seed in that uh region but there's nobody gonna want to face them uh <laughs> in the first round uh, look at letting them uh, s skip up into your home field be careful. Yeah, no, uh, the Leopards have, have got a lot left in them this season. Uh, Dr. Cesar Roca uh, with us here to uh, talk with us from uh, AOC uh, Sports Medicine. And um, hamstrings are something we, we, we hear uh, uh, all the time, sports otherwise. Um, but boy, there's like the hamstring, there's a lot going on there, isn't it? Your back, your hamstring, there, there's a, it does a lot, doesn't it? I mean, hamstrings are underrated, but I, I, I probably talk to patients every week or actually probably at least a couple of times a day about about hamstring injuries and it can be uh it can be a spectrum i mean it could be a, a tiny twinge in a couple of days you're back back to normal it can be a more severe tear and most of the most tears of the hamstrings tend to happen in the middle of the muscle and those tend to recover quite frankly just fine even in the worst case scenario you'll be out for six weeks the problem is that if you if your hamstrings are very tight and you have a very uh, abrupt uh, run for instance sprint if the hamstring comes off your hip, Oof. that's uh, that's that is uh, uh, that's a severe injury, and that requires surgery. It requires a very uh, complicated surgery with an incision on, you know, mm. on the buttocks. And you have to re literally reattach the tendon back. Yep. So the one one thing that you can do to prevent all those problems is just make sure that you, you keep your hamstrings nice and stretched. And we also have to do some exercises. Of and course. You, I mean, I think you've seen as players a lot of players bigger, more muscles. What are like the tendons? Tendons don't seem to like. It, it seems to be more of a challenge. Yeah. It's interesting. You have both extremes. If you have someone who's uh, who's very athletic and actually very strong, but doesn't like you guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but if you don't stretch enough. Okay, and even an athletic person can rupture. And then you have the other, of course, not you guys, but sedentary people who sit for a long time, and those hamstrings get real tight. Mm. So even for a general population, you just have to maintain your hamstring stretch because it can also give you back pain, it can give you knee pain, it can give you all kinds of problems. I was going to say, I had a friend who was, who was really dealing with back pain, and it, it turned out the best thing for him was ha helping stretch, get his hamstrings stretch. Hamstring stretch. stretch. Yeah. But I mean, something that I tell patients sometimes is, oh, just a little twinge. But if your hamstrings are tight and you have an abrupt sprint, for instance, you can rupture the quadriceps tendon, you can rupture the, the patella tendon, you can even fracture the patella. I've seen young uh, people, uh, skeletally mature young people, who actually have ruptured the, uh, the, the growth plate. So I cannot tell you, I mean, it's a you know, public service announcement, please stretch your hamstrings. And how, how's the best way to do, do that? Like best way I usually tell patients to do very gentle. See, that's a little bit interesting. So there's a philosophical thing where people say you should not stretch. I think you should, you should I think what happens is if you stretch abruptly when your muscles are, are, are cold mm -hmm. or stiff, you can hurt yourself. But I just tell patients a lot of times, very gently, lean forward, just gently, gently, 30 seconds, several times a day, 
and that's that goes along no yeah, way. You can do that at your desk. If you're I can do it like um, right now. It's just stretch it right. You don't have to put your foot in the back of your head. You have to get <laughs> just a nice, gentle stretch. Do it on a Zoom meeting. That's one thing you can do on a Zoom meeting. Without there you, you go. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's it. it. Dr. Roca, great to great. Uh, Good to see you guys. See as well. Stretch those uh, hamstrings. Public service announcement. Stretch there you go. those uh, <laughs> hamstrings. When we come back, we'll get you ready for tonight's 7A matchup. Tonight, it's uh, Alma Bryant coming across the bay to take on the Fairhope Pirates. We'll talk more about it right after this. Friday Night Rivals 7A Region 1 action tonight here on UTV 44. The Fairhope Pirates playing host to uh, Alma Bryant, uh, the Hurricanes tonight as we get ready for this uh, matchup. We haven't seen Bryant High School in, uh, Jared says it's been long. I, th I thought we did one not too terribly long ago. Yeah, but uh, always trust Jared. He's, yeah, he, he's the historian. He's the I, one that pays attention. I know we did one like in uh, 2000 down there. We did. And it, it, it was on. It was the, the party was the pregame party was on. It really for, was. Yeah. For uh, sure, Catch Do uh, Coach Doug Hain with us here. Uh, Aiden Adams, uh, who's going to be all over the field tonight, uh, we'll talk all about. This him. is the only time tonight you're going to see him sitting still. Yes. So uh, just get ready. Offense, defense, kick returns, those type, uh, <laughs> the those type of things. Coach got off to a, a good start. Uh, good start to the year. Started started two and zero, oh, and then I know a bunch of uh, close games, but now playing uh, playing better. Uh, as well, but um, a, a chance here. You got Fairhope and Murphy to close things out. I mean, a, a chance to, to finish strong for, for the it, season. Here. The kids have been playing hard all year long. As you mentioned, we were 2-0, and uh, we've had two games we've lost by a total of four points on the last play of the game. So you, you look at 43 seconds and four points, and we can be, uh, you know, it can be turned around a little bit. But the main point is the kids, have uh, they've gathered themselves through that, and they show up to play every week. So... You know, we're just trying to get better every week. Fair Hope's going to be a big challenge for us, and and uh, and just continue to build on the on the program. Those those things are are important. I mean, just to start making sure that culture is the way you want it. That the the kids this year are showing the the leadership to the kids next year on how to do it to continue that improvement to to because it's a it's a tough battle in seven A Region One each each week, but to get those incremental wins to continue to grow your program, I guess. That, that's right. You know, you, it's one game at a time. I tell the kids, you know, we, we need to go in this game. We need to play like we're five and three, not three and five. And I told them that last week before the uh, before the Davidson game and they showed up to play. You know, we just, we've had two heartbreakers, but the important thing is it's how you play the game. Mm -hmm. Our kids play the game hard on every single play. Uh, they play with class and you can't ask for much more than that. Coach, talk about your philosophy of coaching. You've been around, you've coached in other states in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. But at this point in your career, you've got a pretty good idea of what you're trying to get out of your team. Exactly what, what is in your day? What is in your mind to start the day? What do you want from that team on that day? You, you know, we always preach mistakes, uh, more specifically turnovers. Uh, you know, since I've been at Bryant, every game where we've won the turnover battle, we have won the game. Mm. We have not lost a game yet where we won the turnover battle. And, you know, that's, that's, you're getting tougher and tougher to do these days. But, you know, uh, I, I think you have to play physical. Uh, I think you have to play sound. And you have to take care of the football, especially when you're playing some folks that have talent across the board. And th there's no easy games in our region. <laughs> Everyone has a lot of talent. And if you get behind the chains with penalties or if you turn the ball over, you know, you're, you're just making your night much tougher than mm -hmm. it needs to be. And for us, uh, how we match up with teams, we need to play a clean game. We need to be ahead of them on penalties. And we need to win the turnover battle. And you got to uh, you got to count on your key guys. Like your your, your key guys got to step up uh, each and every Friday night. And we were just talking about Aiden, what he what he does. Talk about what this young man does. He's a senior. You've been there four years. I mean, it, it, I mean what we're seeing now. I mean, he's been doing this a long time down in the Bayou, right? Our our key kids have to show up. You know, again with with with, with what uh, you know our, our identity. Our, our key kids have to show up. I, I, Aiden came there as a freshman when I came there my first year. And uh, he's been starting for us since his freshman year. You know, he plays defense back, cornerback, plays wide receiver for us, returns punts, returns kicks. So he, he's a big part of the game plan. So, for instance, if Aiden doesn't show up, that's a big part of our game plan. So, and we just have, you know, football's team sport. We preach it all the time. And I really believe that. And I think even the kids that don't get a lot of playing time, uh, what they bring in the locker room, what they bring on the practice field, goes just as far as, uh, as someone like Aiden. It really does. And, uh, I won't change my mind on that. I've been, I've been doing this too long. Uh, Aiden might get the touchdowns, but it's the other kids, too, that, that, that bring us whether we're a good team or not. But we definitely need our players like Aiden to show up. Yeah. Aiden, talk about uh, what, how excited you are every Friday night knowing you're going to 
play uh, more than anyone else <laughs> ever even imagined. You've, 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 your, your career has been eight years in four, so. Uh, well, yes, sir. Well, I like just, oh, crap. Uh, well, I, I've been doing this for a long time, so I just like showing out every Friday night, thinking every game is important, and I want to do the best for my team, and I like them I like them to do it back for me too. I, I bet you do. Like blocking on a punt return, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah uh, but it's also going to be um, so. You know, you. I think if you talk to any any athlete, you know, the the practice, the I don't want to say drudgery, but it's the monotony, the practice. You do all that to get to, in this case, Friday night. I mean, and playing is is fun, and I gotta I gotta believe you just love you love playing on both sides of the ball uh, equally equally well. Like hey, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Well. I like, well, my favorite part is probably defense. I like, I'm a big part of our defense, and I like to hit people. And <laughs> offense, I also like scoring touchdowns. But it's not just me on both sides. I have everyone doing their job so I can make the big plays. Now, you good, talked about a good uh, player to good team play, team, teammate. Yeah, no no doubt. And, and you talked about just the, uh, the, the, the challenge in 7A every um, Every week down here, I mean, it is it is a bad line. Six A is the same way. I think you can say say that. But boy, it's um, you 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 got to come out from the jump ready to go, no matter who you are in seven A Region One every Friday night. I think if you look at our region, and this might not hold true every year and every game, but I'd say nine percent of the time, if you come out flat, I you know I really think anyone in our region can beat anyone. Yeah. I mean, you you have to show up to play. You know, we certainly have teams in our region that that you look at that uh, will have more athletes than other teams, but at the same point, it's so competitive that you have to show up to play week in and week out. We're looking excited. We're excited to see your team tonight. This is well, going to be fun. Thanks, guys. We yeah, appreciate we're excited. it. We can't, uh, we can't wait. We're excited gonna, to see this guy. Yeah, we're going to talk about uh, you a lot tonight. Uh, we promise that. So uh, that's the uh, Alma Bryant side of things. We'll come back. We'll hear from Coach Carter and the Pirates as they play host to Alma Bryant tonight right here on UTV 44's Friday Night Rivals. We'll come back and talk Pirate football right after this. Friday Night Rivals here on UTV 44 and our first chance uh, to see Emma O'Brien, our first chance to see the home team, the Fairhope Pirates uh, this year. Sometimes the uh, schedule just works out like that. We don't get to see a team until late in the year, but we're excited to uh, see the Pirates. Coach uh, Tim Carter here, Rydland, you know, your quarterback, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I know it's sometimes it's, it's a challenge for a coach when you have a quarterback who doesn't look like a quarterback, doesn't look athletic, doesn't look <laughs> like he's on a central mean. casting in Hollywood. Of uh, We're doing the best we can, I mean, okay? <laughs> coach, you're doing your own work. You, uh, uh, you've done the best. It's, uh, uh, it's, uh, we'll talk more about, uh, we'll talk a lot about Riley during the game. We'll talk more uh, about it here, but, um, you know, so uh, kind of last two weeks of the, uh, the regular season and, um, Continuing on to uh, battle a little ups and downs, but I mean you you, you got to like where your team's at as we start looking a little bit uh, to the last two weeks and also potentially down the road in the playoffs. Yes, yeah, it's, it's been a real competitive region, uh, and you know we've had a pretty trying schedule, and our kids have really played hard during it. We've lost a couple games, uh, you know, but uh, we're really playing well now. I, I really like where we're at. Uh, we've got a few kids back, and uh, you know we've kind of been able to gel a little bit. I brought in a new offensive coordinator and Joel Williams and a uh, little experience, a little bit experience. Little experience yeah, there. yeah, uh, a little younger than me. <laughs> and uh, Joel's come in and done a great job. And I, I really uh, not having a spring training for him to get to know the kids and them to get to know him. I think it took us a little while, uh, but I really like where we're at now. Uh, kids are playing really hard. We have a great senior class and uh, you know, this is a year we should play well. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we got two big games left. We got Bryant Friday night, but next Friday we play Murphy. Uh, so there's a lot to be determined, but uh, we're having a lot of fun. Our kids got both of these games at home and you know, there's no guarantee. It's looking like we may have to travel on the road in the playoffs if we're able to advance. So, uh, you know, they need to play really hard because uh, they love playing at uh, Volanta and Stadium and Majors Field. So uh, that, you know, they won't get to hear that cannon much longer. So. <laughs> Yeah, I was just over in Baldwin County on Saturday, and I was there really kind of a fact-finding mission to figure out what 
what's still standing, what's down. Talk about hurricane damage and what the hurricane did to your team because you guys were right in the middle of it. I, I, I think did, it was. I think Fairhope's overlooked a little bit sometimes as to how much yeah. damage there was. Yeah, we, we were very, we were impacted greatly. Yeah. in Fairhope, I know Foley was hit hard, Orange Beach, uh, some of that through Central Baldwin County. Mm -hmm. It kind of got a little better after you went further north, but uh, Fairhope got real, hit really hard. I know the. Uh, you know, the fruit and nut district, as they call it, the downtown area lost a lot of trees. I mean, they're still running the roads now, picking up debris on the side of the roads, have a long way to go. So uh, we had kids that didn't have power for almost two weeks, had a coach that didn't have power for close to two weeks. So uh, it's, been a, it's been a trying time. It's just been a different year. I mean, 2020 has just been really trying. And that's why I'm so proud of our team and all these teams because of what they battled outside of the game. Uh, it's just been, uh, it's been really a test testing coaches, players, families, and uh, it's, I'm, I'm really proud of the resilience that we've shown as, a, as an association mm -hmm. for sticking in there because, you know, we don't need to be fearful in this country. Uh, we need to attack things head on, and, and I think these guys getting a chance to play and getting back out and, and, and being active is what they needed. Let's talk about this guy. So you played basketball last year at McGill, and uh, tremendous player. Love, love, love. So let's talk about let's talk about your growth as a quarterback, the new offensive coordinator. Why you're so much more comfortable? I assume looking at the numbers this year, when I mean, you came out of the gate just blowing up, right? Sure. Uh, talk about where your confidence level is and how how you gained that. Yeah. So like Coach Carter said, we brought in the uh, new offensive coordinator. He's been a great help. Obviously, he's been he's been around the game for a while. So, you know, every chance I can get to, uh, you know, get go extra after practice, you know, get on the board with him. It's been, a, uh, it's been a huge help for me, but then again, I mean, the offensive line this year has really stepped up, and my receivers, they, I mean, I can't do it without them. So, you know, defense gets us on the field, and then, you know, the offensive line has done a remarkable job. I, I think I might have been only sacked, what, maybe three times all year, max, so it's been, it's been great. You know, the first time we saw him, he was a young pup, he was a sophomore, mm -hmm. and you put him in just to run the ball. He, or, or at least that's what he ended up doing. Yeah, no, I, was just, I, was, I just didn't know how to stay in the pocket. So I just, it, it, looked, it looked like a draw every play, but I just It, it did. I it looked like one draw after another. So, you know, it's, uh, but they talk about the game, uh, no matter what level, like slowing down for, for players. I mean, it, it, it's got to seem like such a different game to you today than it did back your sophomore year, right? Oh, yeah. It's, I'm, I'm way more comfortable in the pocket. And I, I, you know, I, obviously that just comes with time. So, yeah, from sophomore to senior year, it's a, it's a huge difference. Talk about like the, the 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 fun factor, like the 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 fun factor of, of of loving to play football, being the quarterback of your high school. On for, I mean, you're a you're a great gregarious kid. I mean, you're you're so like well, just talk about like like that, just how much fun it is out there on Friday nights. Yeah, it's a blessing to be in the position I am. Like I, I try not to take it for granted. Every day that I walk on walk onto the field, or I'm with the guys. We have such great enthusiasm this year, and that just that just brings it brings up my level, of, you know, my energy. So. You know, Friday nights, it's, there's nothing like it. And it's, it's hard to even explain, like, the feeling you get, especially being the quarterback. So, like I said, I'm not trying to take it for granted and just, you know, take it one step at a time. I'll get Coxie to go to a basketball game with me at Fairhope this year, but you got to promise me 40. <laughs> <laughs> Back to you, Coach. <laughs> so, and just, just uh, I mean, a, 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 a athletic, leadership, whatever. I mean, he's just a delightful young man to be, to be around. Absolutely. Every college coach that I talk to, I said, you think you like him, you'll, you'll like him more every day you're around him. Uh, you know, it just grows, that appreciation. So, you know, the, he's got the athletic ability, I mean, but there's a lot of guys that have the athletic ability. Uh, he's got the, he's competitive, he hates to lose. Uh, beat him in some, uh, like the golf course a couple months ago oh, uh, when I had to spank him. Uh, I mean, he just hates to lose, and, and that you know that's you gotta that's have what that. you gotta have. Uh, and he wants to be the best, and he has a desire, and he's willing to learn, and he he's like a sponge. And I know Joel came in. You know, Joel's been an offensive coordinator at three different collegiate uh, institutions, and he comes in, and I mean, every day them in there on the board, and he's just wanting to learn. He's like, you know, talking on Saturday to him after the game, and he's like, hey, what if you'd have done this? And he said, I know, Coach, I see it now. I'll never do that again. You know, I mean, he just is, is wants to be the best. Uh, you know, he's got – Coach Cliff, Cutcliffe calls him all the time because he knows he's got something really special. Yeah, congratulations. Awesome. Going, to, uh, going to do, I mean, just a, uh, a life-changing event in so many, uh, so many ways. Uh, good luck tonight. Stay safe. Coach, stay here. We'll come back. We'll wrap things up. We'll talk with both coaches and get you ready for our matchup tonight. Fairhope and Alma Bryant right here on UTV 44. Oh, 
Oh, we uh, we love talking with the coaches, the players, and the uh, commercial breaks. We, there's nothing like we couldn't say during the show. Well, Mask and Curtis are here sometimes. It is maybe, but uh, not with these not with these two uh, gentlemen, Jim Cox, Dan Brennan. Uh, coaches here as we get ready for our matchup of Bryant taking on uh, Fairhope. So uh, you've not been here for this segment. It's changed now. It's a little silly segment. It's called uh, Like It, Love It, or Steer Clear of It. It's very, it's not as hard as it uh, sounds. Uh, I'll start right here. Next week, overnight lows in the 40s. Like it. Like it. Like it. Like it. Steer clear of it. I, I hate it. I hate cold, oh, cool, same. crisp, none of that. <laughs> Sitting in a deer stand. Love it. Steer clear of it. Love it. Yeah, I'd steer, yeah I'm just, maybe if I had a camera, just like take a picture, I'm not doing that. My wife made a great meal last night. Uh, mussels and a little white wine sauce. Mussels. Steer clear of it. Steer clear of it. <laughs> clear. Oh, love it. Gotta expand it uh, a little bit. Now's when we get to the... Uh, hypothetical gambling portion uh, that we talk about. The 5-1 first place in the NFC North, number two in the NFC. You know who I'm talking about. Chicago Bears. Chicago Bears uh, <laughs> getting six points at L.A. on Monday Night Football against the Rams on Monday night. Rams. I like it. I, you like the Bears getting six against the Rams? It's going to help how I talk about I'm your coaching tonight. Yeah, I'm yeah. <laughs> I love it. Five and one. I love it. Uh, under 51 and a half points between the Saints and the Panthers this weekend. I like it. You, li you, like, you don't like, you like it? No, I'm out. I'm out. I'm oh, I like it. Okay. Yeah, I, I like that. All right. Bama laying three touchdowns at Tennessee. Like it. Love it. Yeah. Ooh. Like it. Like it. Todd Watson, sorry, but that, that's like. That's, Coach Pruitt's going to have him ready now. Yeah, yes. It won't I be think easy. So. I think I that's think so. making money. It's not even a rivalry anymore. <laughs> South, <laughs> South giving uh, Louisiana Monroe 15. Oh, I like it. Yeah. I like it. I think Steve's a heck of a coach. I agree. Yeah, I, uh, I like that too. And the over of 70 and a half, Auburn and Ole Miss. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. Yeah, it doesn't. No. steer clear. I'm going to steer clear of that. Uh, Auburn's... I'm just going to steer clear of anything related to Auburn and Kevin Steele have them ready. Numbers on Saturday. <laughs> not, not, clear not a very good coach. Uh, any of that one. Ready for a big 7 8 matchup tonight. Thanks for being here, Coach. Great to uh, meet you. Thanks for being great sports. Thanks to our two players. We'll talk more about them as we get ready to kick things off from Fairhope tonight. It's the Pirates and the Hurricanes right here on